croissant mini fans. Alrighty, so today we're going to be making some armoured containers. Alright, let's get on to building. We're making two of these shipping containers, but they're, they're going to both be different to each other, but the ends will be the same. So I'm starting off with four pieces of chipboard, six by six centimeters, and I've drawn a grid one centimeter in, and then using those measurements, I cut each of the corners off and do this for all four. And what I want then, because it's three mil thick, but I want the ends to be five mil wide. So I grab some thinnish cardboard and cut it to the right dimensions and then hot glue that onto the bit of chipboard we've just cut. For one of the containers, I want it to be like a fuel container. I have this old bottle for some kind of medicine or, or vitamins, but it's not quite long enough. I really want it to be about 12 centimeters long or 11 centimeters long. Um, so I use the lid and draw out the shape onto some cardboard and I cut uh, four bits of cardboard and hot glue those onto the end just to make it a bit longer. What we do next is I've cut a bit of card the same dimensions as the bottle in the center and I got the diameter by of a circumference by just wrapping a piece of old card around and marking it off. I've got the exact dimensions and I just hot glue this bit of card all the way around on the on the bottle and I then hot glue the both ends on. What I do next, I've cut some 11 centimeter long by one and a half centimeter wide bits of chipboard, and these get glued onto the corners or where the corners were, the diagonal cuts on the end pieces. I just glue these in with PVA glue. Next I start assembling the other shipping container which is just going to be flat panels all around the outside. So I've, again I've got one and a half by eleven centimeter panels, four of these, and then the other ones are four centimeters wide by eleven centimeters so they're going to be the top, bottom and sides. And this was a bit of a hassle but I basically just glue the, the diagonal bits on first with hot glue and in the end I actually use some masking tape to keep them all straight and then I just whack in the side panels and put in so much hot glue just to make sure that it's all really secure I go around all the gaps with PVA glue as well on the outside and then wait for this all to dry
are a few gaps uh, in between the chipboard sides. Uh, so what I do next is I've got a load of panels of just card, about one mil thick. These get glued on all over that chipboard, literally covering it all except for the very ends. And then I have some extra trim, which is five mil wide and scored at about, it was 1.6 centimeters. So it's 1.6 and then th uh, 4 and then 1.6 and this goes around very t the end of the top, both, both ends and the same with the bottom, but not the sides. You can see what I'm doing in the video. So in those gaps at the end of the sides, we fill those with a bit of cable tie. And then I also use two pieces of cable tie to separate those side panels both sides and I just glue this on with PVA. For the rest of this video whenever I do any trim it's 5 mil wide. Always the same now. Um, so I just add these long strips of trim and glue them on with PVA. I want to make an enclosure on one end for what will be the door. So I'm using 5 mil wide chipboard and I've just cut it into sections. The main sides and top and bottom are 4 centimeters long. Then the tiny little bits are 1.5 and, and then cut at 45 degree angles at both ends. I glue these round the end where the door will be, just using PVA glue again. Next up, the door itself. I traced on some baking paper around the inside of that enclosure we've just made. And then I cut out a piece of chipboard using this as a template. Then I mark this bit, the actual doorway, a centim um, in centimeter intervals all the way down it. And then I glue some thin, fine wire across each of these centimeter partitions. What I do now is glue the door into that enclosure we've made, just using PVA glue. And then I want to make some way it attaches to the actual shipping container and how it would le open. Um, so I've added just a couple of five mil wide sections of cardstock at the bottom and then I like the shape of the ends of cable ties. So I've got two sections and I glue these on. Right, lots and lots of trim. I do any end which hasn't got a door and also diagonal brace beams on the shipping container sides.
for the top of the enclosed shipping container, I've just cut some corrugated paper. It's about four centimeters wide, 11 centimeters long, and I just glue this down with PVA. Just a little extra detail on any of the diagonal trim sections. I've cut one and a half by one and a half centimeter squares of card and I just glue these on in the center of each of those diagonals. camera angle my head blocks most of this shot so I'm sorry about that but um, what I've done the fuel container I've just glued some just parts of cable ties across the top leaving a small space in the middle and I have this bit of rubber I think it's from a lid of a little pot uh, but I've cut it down and then glued that into the center I've done this bit off camera, but I just cut a small circle of card and this can be the hatch at the very top of the fuel container. And then I've made a wheel out of wire and I just wrapped it around a paintbrush and then made a kind of T shape and glued that onto that circle I've just made. When I drilled a hole in the piece of card I've added to the top and pushed this in, super glue it down. And then I made a connecting part with just some card and uh, a little section of cocktail stick. All right, riveting time. I don't go too overboard with this on this project. I just do the door down those, the, the cable tie bits we've added. And again, just get the rivets close to where you want them, bit of super glue, and then nudge them into position. And then using a tiny section of cable tie, I glue this next to the door and this will be the control panel and I just glue some more rivets to that which will be painted later as buttons. Alright, so I've mod podged and sealed the whole, both shipping containers and then base coated them uh, with burnt umber. But the, the fuel one, I've done the pipe white and then I've masked it off with masking tape and some scrap paper. But anyway, I start off the painting with a couple of heavy dry brushes of silver. For the main panels, I paint them reddish brown and it's just burnt umber and some red, half and half, 50-50 mix. I paint all those panels and it's quite watered down so I do two coats. Next up, give the whole thing a blast with black wash. It's just my homemade black wash. And then I dab it off of the white pipe because I, I don't want that to be so grimy, but just a bit. So yeah, I just go in with a tissue and dab off some of the, um, some of the excess. Tiny little bit of extra colour. Those little buttons we added next to the door. I paint one red, one blue and one green. On to some, just a few rust effects. I sponge on some burnt umber just in a few a few different places quite randomly and then a bit of orange after this once I've done this I sponge on just a little bit of silver quite randomly on some of those red panels to show where the paint's been chipped off
and the final stage just doing some brownish stains just use brown ink and just sort of dribble it on underneath where rust is and where I think there would be some dirt and grime and that's the project complete up next I'll show some photos of the crates um, one of the photos has some marines in just to show the scale and as always if you've liked anything in this video please like leave a comment and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my videos all right see you in the next one